Hey, can you uh, hand me my my hat? Not, <laughs> not, not this one. Not this one. <laughs> Sorry, uh, there we go. <sighs> <We're> ready? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I can't take myself so seriously. <laughs> What's up, guys? In this video today, we're actually gonna be going over um, one of my Facebook ad accounts. Uh, that basically we just started testing a general drop shipping store um, with a bunch of different products and I'm gonna kind of give you guys the layout of how we kind of structured those ads while we're testing them um, what sort of like content material we use to test them sort of like the results we were getting um, just so that you guys kind of see the back end of you know basically after spending like 5k and within the span of like four days uh, testing a bunch of different products and a bunch of different ad sets under those products okay so we're gonna screen record that um, kind of walk you guys through that sort of process and then I'll see you guys. I don't know what I'm gonna say. I said I'll see you guys. Uh, we're gonna screen record the process. I'll kind of walk through everything like that, and then uh, yeah, we'll just get to it. All right, all right, guys. So right now we are in one of the ad accounts um, that we were using to test this particular store. Again, this is a general product store that we were running. Um, usually, I'm I'm usually working with a lot more sort of like niche uh, stores and whatnot, but this time. I wanted to kind of use our sort of strategy, I guess, and apply it to a general store and just test a bunch of different products, okay? So as you can see, again, this is the testing phase that we're going through. We were not expecting this to be profitable. Um, it actually turned out to be a little bit profitable, which is um, obviously a good thing. Um, but I'd say around the 5K that we spent, uh, we made about, as you can see here, at the very bottom, uh, 8.2. And then our margins on these general products that we were selling were actually about anywhere between 8 and 12X. Uh, the cost of goods price and uh, we were not using AliExpress okay we were using um, a supplier that we used to work with on AliExpress um, but we since you know developed a relationship with them and now we just um, use Skype and then they send us an invoice every single month and we get uh, discounts basically so we don't actually have to uh, sell it for the actual cost of goods that you know like AliExpress would list for we get roughly I'd say like 10% discount on um, each product like that okay so basically as you can see um, on the campaign level of this things were not like a lot of the, the campaigns that we were doing for the products we were testing weren't that profitable, which basically means that that product and all the ads that we were selling, like we would consider that just like a, a product that we, uh, with the content we're using and stuff, like can't scale. And then we move on to the products that we can or are looking promising, okay? So you'll see that with the amount spent, um, a lot of these campaigns, again, the testing phase, so we weren't going for crazy profitability. We just wanted things that we could use to you know, increase the budgets, um, increase ad spend um, when it showed promise, okay? One more thing I wanted to add, guys. Um, I just totally forgot after I recorded this video, but one of the reasons, too, uh, that we didn't see as big of a row as is kind of we were expecting for this one, even though we were still profitable in the testing phase and it was just a testing campaign, uh, we weren't using custom content. Again, for this general dropshipping store, where you were either using still images or just videos that we could compile and use as ads, okay? So I think that's also an important factor in terms of why for at least some of the ad sets, they just did not perform or they just didn't get the right results, whereas some others, you know, perform 10 times better than expected, okay? So again, creative is becoming more and more important on Facebook as a platform in general, just because more and more buyers are actually hopping on um, and it's an auction platform, right? So just whoever delivers the best results for their customers usually get put up front um, in terms of the auction okay so creative and what the actual you know potential customers are seeing is super super important to that guys so um, yeah I just wanted to add that in as a quick little stipulation um, just because I forgot to say it all right on to the video on to the video <laughs> so uh, basically you know what shows promise right um, we're gonna go into the ad sets and I'm just trying to break down basically how we structure each ad set and sort of like what we use like oh how, how do we target things how do we you know you know decide when to kill the ads um, etc right so again I apologize if I'm stammering it is two in the morning and I have a flight to Bali uh, in like six hours so trying to get this video in for you guys before like a 20 hour uh, mission but basically guys each campaign is a different product that we're testing okay and in that uh, campaign right there's a bunch of different ad sets so again let's just click this campaign for instance right or let's do one that spent a little bit more money so this one okay in this campaign you'll see that we had a bunch of different ad sets here right so uh, this is like what uh, 10 10 different ad sets for one product that we were testing okay and in each ad set there's usually two creatives okay We'll use one creative as an image and one as an actual video to kind of test that. Or we'll use two videos, okay? Um, so we'll go back to the um, ad set level. And as you can see, on the actual ad set level for this particular campaign, we're getting, um, you know, we only had, what, two ad sets that 
had a negative ROAS, right? So less than less than one, right? So this one had zero, this one had 0.8, so we're losing money on those. But every other one was technically a profitable ad set, right? Now that doesn't necessarily mean a profitable campaign because you still have to factor in your cost of goods and other things like that. But um, these were all profitable, so they showed promise, right? And so when they show promise, that's usually when we want to um, increase the budget. So you can see here, we increase the budgets from $100, but they all start at 10. So all these ad sets are usually starting at $10 a day. We increase as we see uh, you know, as we see data come in and we see like, okay, the ROAS is a little bit higher, um, so we can test it out and uh, test more product, right? So if I deselect this one campaign here and we go to all the ad sets, you'll see a lot of these ad sets, again, you have to test so much. So every single ad set, guys, is one interest. That's what we do. One interest, um, they don't, not all of them are super broad, but most are pretty broad, okay? So we're just trying to, again, again just test, 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 because the key to Facebook um, is again like testing that's why like it's it sucks when like you get someone like when you guys would dm me or something and ask like hey i'm selling this product what do i do or like how, how do i do this and it just sucks because usually the answer is like test it like test it out test if this method works test if this one works right so again we're just testing a bunch of different ads to kind of see which ones will click you notice a lot of these right like the ads that do get sales have a pretty high row ads okay but there's a lot that just are not getting purchases right which again brings the overall row ads for that campaign um in general lower right so that's why overall we're at a 1.38 so basically a 1.4 row ads but you'll see a lot of these have quite um higher so this one's almost 10 row ads um a lot of these like you know 3.68 uh seven so stuff like that that we just like we're working with on scaling um and then moving to other ad accounts to uh, replicate those and scale up uh, additionally just because we have a lot of problems especially when you're spending kind of a, a decent chunk of money over a very short time period with facebook uh, you just run into a lot of issues so this one had an issue so we moved it to a different ad account but then i decided i should show you guys this one and kind of give you a quick little rundown of um, what we have going on here and kind of like how we're structuring right so again what we do is one campaign one product in that campaign itself, you usually have 10 ad sets. Um, the more you can test, the better, but each ad set starts at a $10 daily budget. Uh, we're not using CBO yet, just because, um, well, at least for this particular store, just because we are um, basically testing with ad sets so it's like a guaranteed spend under that one interest rather than a bunch of different interests that Facebook just chooses. We have 10 ad sets, $10 budget per ad set in those ones, uh, two creatives, uh, usually per ad set it can be a video and an image um, or two videos We have a lot more success with videos just because you can create look-alike audiences a lot faster from like view duration and stuff like that uh, Like you know click-through rate everything like that It's just easier and quicker to make a look-alike audience um, from that data that you're gathering versus just a still image, right? Um, but then after that guys is this is just it really just comes down to testing We're testing so many different ad sets here um, and just trying to see which ones kick. And then the ones that do, we increase their daily spend. The ones that don't, we cut them off, okay? Usually we'll cut them off between, you know, two days, three days. Um, but for this particular campaign, because we were testing really fast, we did it, you know, within, I think it was within an eight hour period. We let it test eight hours, eight hours, and then decide from there, okay? Or a day max. But really, it's it really just comes to kind of like what you're comfortable spending, what you can afford to spend and lose. Because again, guys, don't expect to be profitable when you're testing these products, right? Again, you're testing products to figure out which ones have promise. And then from there, you're scaling up, okay? This was just a testing phase. We still managed to be a little profitable, um, but you know you shouldn't, you shouldn't expect that right off the bat, especially if you're new to the space, okay? Um, and shout out to Krispy Kreme. This hat is fucking sick. Now, I mean, I don't know what else I should really talk about here for you guys. Um, but yeah, guys, as you can see, it's like with all these ad sets, there's so many different ad sets for the products. Uh, the way we label them is just the interest itself. We might do a, a gender sort of like W, women, men's, male, um, M for male, stuff like that. But we just keep things very, very simple in sort of our layout for this kind of stuff and um, kind of go from there, guys. It's really just comes down to testing. Like the more you can afford to test on Facebook, the quicker you'll get data, the quicker you can evaluate that data and then proceed forward accordingly, right? But yeah, guys, there's not really any sort of like crazy secret sauce to Facebook ads. It really comes down to testing, um, which is why, you know, when you guys message me like, hey, should I do this, this, or this for like Facebook ads and stuff, like it, it, it's not like the, 
I mean, the best answer for me to answer that is just to tell you to test it. Um, and being able to afford to test as many different videos as you can is really how you're gonna see that success through paid advertising on like the Facebook and Instagram platform and really any platform really, just because you wanna test these variables, right? Um, so it's kind of a good thing having like OCD where you just kind of have to test everything and your head goes kind of crazy where it's like, you should have tested that. But um, yeah, guys, basically, uh, also I wanna answer why we don't really use uh, the CBO. Um, campaign budget optimization for this particular store and really uh, it just comes down to like we want to make sure that Facebook is spending the allocated money per each ad set so we can actually get data on that particular interest um, because we're doing one interest per ad set um, and just because we don't want Facebook to kind of choose where to allocate money uh, just because we've seen it can kind of be messy at times um, and it's just not a super easy way to test a bunch of interest right away um, when you're trying to start off with cold data because again cold traffic cold data all that kind of stuff is usually the most expensive piece of data that you're going to be purchasing uh, rather than like retargeting and look like audience and stuff like that where you can get cheaper uh, conversions right but cold data is usually the most expensive and we want to make sure that facebook is pushing money into all these different interests so we can get that cold data quicker and you know more spread out across the board okay um but yeah guys basically campaign level or on the campaign uh how we structure uh, bleh, how we structure the products and the stores is campaign is one product uh, ad sets uh, ten dollars a day one interest um, we usually stick to like the top five countries I'll show you guys uh, this one real quick if I click edit um, so as you guys can see this one ten dollar budget um, we just use sort of like the bigger countries uh, we're not doing worldwide for these or anything and everything stays broad, age range, don't touch it, gender, don't touch it, um, interest, just one interest, okay? Um, that's really how we're structuring it, and we're just testing, like, as many things as you can, right? If you can afford to test 100 different ad sets at times a day, like, you should. Um, I wouldn't really recommend that, especially if you're a beginner. But, um, as you can see, for these ones, we're usually doing 10 ad sets per product, okay? So that's that's a good kind of range to start off with, right? Um, and then in each ad set, two creatives. Uh, you can do more if you want, but uh, try to do a video just because it's easier to make, uh, you know, retargeting, look like audiences and whatnot from the sort of attributions and stuff that you can track with video. Okay, guys, so that's kind of the video I wanted to walk through just because this is sort of like a fresh, um, fresh sort of like data that we've been doing for this store is it's really just like a, a few days old um but yeah guys i hope you guys enjoy the video make sure to leave a like make sure to subscribe uh for more videos i'm really excited to start cranking out more youtube content for you guys both on the lifestyle end and you know kind of on this nitty-gritty uh business side of of stuff okay so that should be kind of cool and then uh yeah i got a flight to bali here in the next few hours and then you guys should be seeing some content with my boy kai who has a store right now running that we've been sort of uh, pushing for a bit now, uh, which should be pretty interesting. All right, guys. So uh, anything important is linked in the description below, including the Ecom Challenges Academy. Uh, there's new content being added to that. I haven't really talked about that in a minute, um, but there is new content coming into that. So I'm pretty excited to do that if you are interested. If you have questions or anything like that, guys, make sure to DM me on Instagram, um, or if you go to the landing page, you can literally schedule a call uh, with my team to answer any questions you guys have. If you're already struggling and stuff, you can just schedule a call um, so we can try and help you out. All right. So see you guys in the next video. Um, I'll be in Bali and uh, yeah, hope this is helpful. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe. See you guys.